Hey, hey, it's Mega, aka the Art Messiah, back with another art vlog. Um, this time we're actually doing an art review of the Mobile Studio Pro um, 13 inch i5 version. Um, and um, I thought I'd go ahead and get a review for this because I had just gotten this in the mail last week and I haven't got a chance to sit down and to actually review it. <clears throat> so, first to start off, um, I kind of want to tell a little bit of a, a story of why I even got this Mobile Studio Pro in the first place. Um, I currently have a um, Samsung uh, uh, Notebook 9, I think, Pro, or just a Samsung Notebook 9, I think is what it's called. Um, and honestly, it's pretty fantastic in terms of uh, power um, and the drawing capabilities. Um, uh, that being, it uses the Wacom EMR technology, which is kind of like the, the tried and true uh, technology of of pen input and uh, drawing styluses so I really like that idea of it and um, I, I really enjoyed using it but there was one hiccup and it's a pretty large hiccup um, in in my in my opinion um, in that it's um, it doesn't have uh, quick keys um, so when you're using a, a drawing tablet in your drawing and stuff, you have to use a lot of shortcuts to undo and redo, use your eraser, and especially using um, a program such as Photoshop, um, that really helps you work at a, a, at a natural pace having these shortcuts and stuff. And because there is no keys on the side of the laptop, you have to have an external device to be able to control all these, these shortcuts, right? So. I use, and I, I, I'm still using, a Bluetooth keyboard, and it's small, and it's portable, and that is pretty good. Um, but if you want a device that is purely supposed to be mobile and portable, then I think that having those hotkeys are very important, because it's like you only need one device. You don't need any external devices for shortcuts. And uh, I felt that's what was lacking with the Samsung Notebook 9. And so I began to search for alternatives. Um, and I found pretty much two alternatives that use Wacom technology that also have these hotkeys included. Um, one of them is the um, HP ZenBook, and that's based off Wacom technology. And the second one is the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. And obviously, since it's made by the Wacom, it's really dedicated for um, the, the drawing experience. It's, it's a device made specifically for drawing and specifically for mobile drawing. So um, that is why I have come to the conclusion and I ended up buying the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. And um, I bought the lowest end model just because I wanted to see how heavy it was, how it fit in my hand, how ergonomic it was, how good is the pen, how does it feel to draw, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So that's why I'm going to be reviewing the Mobile Studio Pro um, 13 inch i5 um, today so to kind of start off I'm just gonna go ahead and go through some specs um, and what you can kind of expect uh, from the i um, from this tablet so like I said before it's an i5 so the processes are isn't necessarily um, that fast or that uh, that great um, so we'll kind of touch on that a little bit more farther into the review it is 13 inches, um, however the actual device is a little bit larger than that and it also has some bezels around the screen and I'm going to go ahead and crop in some pictures for that. Um, but for working in a mobile environment, I like the 13 inch because this is something that you can throw into a book bag. Um, I've read a lot of reviews that the 16 inch is a little bit bigger and it's a little bit harder to find a bag for. However, if you do want some more real estate to work with, the 16 inch might be a better solution to go with. Um, so we're gonna gonna go ahead and we're gonna start go ahead and do some um, drawing um, test just to see how does this thing actually perform in action because a lot of reviews just go over the specs and honestly the specs don't really tell you what the device is going to be capable of doing so we are just going to today show you what the device is capable of doing doing a live drawing demonstration and showing some samples okay so here's some samples that were drawn uh, using this device um, actually laying in my bed because I wanted to just see how 
you know versatile is how mobile is can I draw on the bed can I draw when I'm in the car all that kind of stuff so this was drawn in the bed with just a pen and um, my hotkeys I didn't have to use any keyboard so as you can see they're just very loose and quick sketches uh, the one on um, the left is pretty much um, based on a reference and so is the one on right but the uh, one on the right I kind of just mm, made it up as I went and uh, kind of made the design that I went but um, so you can kind of see some samples um, now we're going to go ahead and go in and we're going to go ahead and do some drawing tests so I can kind of show you guys um, how it is drawing with this tablet now it uses the um, uh, I think it's called the Pro Pen, the Pro Pen 2 um, it's supposed to have like 8,000 levels of pressure. It's supposed to be great. Um, it's supposed to have, you know, anything that you can possibly um, ask for. So um, when you're drawing, I don't, I'm not sure if I notice all those pressure sensitivities, but it does feel pretty good when you draw. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start off with um, the uh, circle test. So we're just going to go through and we're going to draw some circles real quick. They're not going to be perfect. I'm not a, um, um, a super skilled artist, so... I can't draw circles as good as some of those graphic designers out there that be doing circles every day. But anyways, we're going to do the circle test, so we're just going to go ahead and try this out. I'm just trying to see if I can connect these circles. And it's pretty accurate, as you can see. Now, some of them are going off, but that's just because of me. That is me just not being able to draw circles, and I'm trying to warm up a little bit. So, circle test, it looks really good. We're going to go ahead and create a new layer. Another thing I like to check for um, when I am drawing or trying a new drawing device is lag. So, I'm just going to draw a bunch of lines really, 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 really quickly, kind of like this, and scroll around and stop. And uh, there does not seem to be really any lag, no matter how quick you move the mouse. And now, when you increase the brush size, that's when you usually tend to get um, a little bit more lag. So let's go ahead and give that a shot too. So I went ahead and switched to a pencil brush, and that has a little bit of texture as well. And normally when you put a little bit of texture in a brush, uh, that's when you start to get the lag. So let's go ahead and um, try it out. Okay, so we're at 900, so you're kind of expecting some lag. And honestly, that's not um, too much of a test of... The, the drawing experience because it's such a big size and you're most definitely going to get some lag. So let's go ahead and decrease that down to something normal. And again, we're going to see if there's any lag. There's a little bit of lag here with this brush. Okay, so let's go down to a normal size that I would actually draw it and let's see if we get that lag. Okay, so I'm noticing a little bit of lag, but uh, really not that bad. Not that bad at all. Um, at a normal size, it, it, it is kind of keeping up with my face. So now, another thing that I want to do is I want to test if it's um, accurate. So when it lags, right, um, it might not follow that correct path. So I'm just going to keep on drawing circles over and over again and see if it's doing any weird kind of skipping in that it can't keep up with it. So that's pretty smooth circle. So um, in terms of, of keeping up with my pen strokes, it is reading it even if it is um, lagging a little bit behind when I am using those uh, big circles. Okay, so this next and probably last test is the line test. And just basically what I like to do here is I want to see again how accurate the, the board is. Can it follow the path that it is supposed to follow? Okay, and uh, for all you beginner artists out there, practice this test right here. Um, traditional paper, it doesn't matter because you're training your eye from getting to one place to the other and connecting that with your hand. And that is an invaluable skill to have as an artist. And it's really performing really well in all these tests, guys. Um, I'm really impressed with how the drawing feels on this. So for a drawing, from a drawing perspective, it's looking really great in terms of just the drawing experience which is really awesome now there is one last test I want to do just in terms of drawing performance and that is creating a straight line um, a lot of the other companies out there cannot do this such as the um, micro Microsoft or what is it called the surface 
the Surface Book or even just the Microsoft Surface. Um, they use a different kind of pen technology and theirs relies on AES and it uses a battery and uh, it's not as precise as accurate as the uh, EMR technology by Wicom. So I have a ruler on this page and we're just going to see if it can draw this straight line without any jitter. Now my hand is jittering a little bit so forgive me on that. That is pretty straight guys so let's try this again. Let's try it in this direction. I am moving the ruler a little bit so it is not perfect but guys that is really straight. That looks really good. And then let's just do a hand a hand drawn one. Okay. keeping that steady you know I have a really shaky hand so this is not really a good test but yeah okay. now there's another thing that I want to try while I have this brush out and that is um, just the pen pressure so let's go ahead and just draw really light let's just draw really light on the screen okay and it does a really good job detecting that that's really good now let's let's do a very thin to dark Thin. thin, dark. Okay, so it does a really good job, and let's see if we can demonstrate this with a with a, a normal brush as well. Um, this is one of the general hard round. Let's see. Oh well, never mind. That's kind of set. Um, so all the brushes I'm using right now are actually custom brushes. It was super easy to import those in. Um, so yeah, guys. As a drawing surface, honestly, it is performing really well. And again, this is the lowest end model. And um, it, it's performing really well. And also on top of that, while I'm doing this review, I'm doing a screen recording. So this is all recorded live. Um, so that means I'm also broadcasting slash recording this. So it's handling Photoshop and it's handling the recording. And then after this video, and I'm going to um, kind of clip this in to add into the performance review. I'm going to be editing all this footage um, within um, Adobe Premiere and we're going to see how it handles that and if it starts to slow down or if we're noticing any lag. So really just trying to test the performance of this device. Is it a good device? Okay, so now that we tested um, all of the actual drawing aspects of it, the, the main reason, the critical reason why I got this device was to see um, how useful are these hotkeys and so that's what I want to go through next the hotkeys and how those can be used for drawing and I'm going to do that by just doing a simple illustration and kind of using these hotkeys and I'm not going to touch the keyboard once and we're just going to go through a, um, um, a simple illustration and um, I'm going to come back and We'll kind of discuss how we use those quick keys to get through everything and kind of the upsides, the downsides to it and everything in between. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to switch to my, 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 I call it my base brush where I basically just lay down a little bit of tone to kind of give my eye some direction um, for when I start um, sculpting out the pose. So I like to think of drawing as sculpting um, more than it is just drawing lines. I like to think of it as form and shape and so that's why I started using these big shapes um, before I even go in to do any kind of line work because um, I like to, to, to think of the process as a sculpting process. So you know just draw like a little stick figure like this. Just get the pose um, and I'm doing this off reference. Um, some of the stuff I do off the top of my head because I want a specific pose and stuff. Um, but for you guys, um, I'm just trying to show um, the capabilities. Okay. So now that we have the base layer down, we're going to go ahead and just switch it into my line, line work. And this is when we're going to start using my short keys a little bit because this is the point in time in which I need to change uh, brush size. I need to. Um, use undo, redo, um, color change, all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and, and get into this. So we're starting our line work and uh, you know we're gonna keep it simple. Um, we're just gonna use this brush size for now but if I did want to change my brush size there's this radial dial on the left of the screen 
and you can set that dial to either change the rotation of the image. I'm going to show that uh, if it works. Um, I think I might have the, the setting a little bit off, so they can't use rotation. Um, you can change the brush size if I click down to brush size. Um, as you can see, I can make this brush size smaller and um, well, larger and smaller, and um, all kinds of really great things that you you uh, need to do while you're drawing. Um, and the main things for me are really just changing the brush size, which I used to always do on the keyboard, but um, now I can kind of switch over and just do it directly on the tablet, which is fantastic. It is uh, really nice to be able to do that. Um, and so, yeah, so that is changing the brush size. Um, once again, I have not touched a keyboard uh, yet. And uh, we're just going to, you know, keep on going in here, kind of just detail out this uh, form and figure. Um, keeping it loose, keeping it sketchy, because we're really just kind of showing the performance of what it kind of looks like and feels like to sketch on this. And honestly, it feels pretty great. Um, personally, I like, so this the screen has a little bit of a matte finish, um, which gives your pen a little bit of grip while you're drawing um, which I find to be fantastic I love it being a little bit grippy but honestly um, I, I like it even grippier than what it is now so personally I'm probably gonna get a, a screen protector um, a matte screen protector to give that really grippy uh, feel for the the tablet um, if I go ahead and, and, and stay with this and actually keep this. Um, but yes, it does feel uh, like a, a, a matte finish a little bit. You know, a little, a little glossy right now because it does glide a little bit. But honestly, it feels pretty good to sketch. Okay. And put the line in there and here, rough in the head shape a little bit. Okay, so that's my base sketch now. Go ahead and set the opacity down a little bit. That is really cool. Actually, you know what? Let me use this as an opportunity to just show you something. So normally, and I use this a lot, I use this for a lot of different things. Normally what I'll do when I'm um, at this point, I will, um, use control U and that is a shortcut within Photoshop to basically pull up your color changer and um, I went ahead and mapped that to one of my hotkeys and I have six hotkeys over here so one of them is undo, one of them is redo, one of them is control U so that I can pull up um, So that I can go ahead and pull up this uh, hue saturation, and um, yeah, as I was saying, this is critical. It's like the fact that I can map any hotkey that I want to, um, you know, whatever key presses and keystrokes, you know, I can customize this however I want. And I have uh, six button, six hot or shortcut buttons I can use, plus a radial button which I can change brush size and rotation. So for me, that's a little bit of a game changer. Um, I don't know any other device that has that much flexibility in hotkeys and if you go with the 16 inch version um, I do believe you get more hotkeys so if you need even more shortcuts um, for not needing a keyboard then that is your go-to so what I like to do is I like to make my uh, sketch a little bit lighter so I don't it doesn't really get in my way a little bit and then I go ahead and click OK and then that looks good and then we can go ahead and draw on top of that okay so we're drawing on top of it and say it's like whoop, I actually accidentally make a mistake I just click redo or undo uh, on my uh, hotkeys and it undo undoes it for me um, and it's super easy I don't gotta touch a keyboard I just have one hand on my hotkeys at all times and I have one hand drawing and that hand that's on the hotkeys what's nice about it is that um, I can keep it on there at all, all times because it is also holding up the board so it's very just comfortable and natural 
uh, a placement for it, and uh, it's very easy to 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 hit all these commands as we're going through and and creating a, a piece of artwork. Um, so yeah, absolutely, absolutely uh, a must. Some hotkeys is a must for me. So I have to say that I am enjoying it, um, and that's why I'm thinking about downgrading because. Um, this is not as powerful as what I have already, and if I get the most powerful version, it's still not as powerful as what I have, and it costs way more. And uh, the and the reason that I don't want to do that and buy that is because um, the Mobile Studio Pro is not a new device; it has been out for um, a few years, and. Um, my thoughts are I'm not going to buy this device that is a few years old for top dollar if they are planning to A come up with something new or another company comes along and notices what they're doing and makes something better for for cheaper and um, it fits my need a little bit and then I'm stuck with this old device uh, with outdated technology um, that I've paid way too much money for so that's what I'm kinda holding out for now um, and getting the most expensive model, but like I said, this this inexpensive one is faring fairly well. Um, so I gotta say that I'm enjoying it quite a bit. And uh, here, I don't know why it's, it was messing up for a little bit, but as you can see here, you can kind of just turn your pen upside down and get that eraser, which is also really nice because it kind of just mimics that real life action of you know just having a, uh, a pen and, and a piece of paper or a pencil and a piece of paper and just being able to rotate that around and go ahead and erase so it just makes drawing feel way more natural than than normal like drawing on a laptop and that was a real downside for a two-in-one for me is that um, a two-in-one was great for its um, flexibility but it just lost a lot of that natural drawing feeling and What's so great about this device is that I'm starting to feel that again. Feel that, just, um, that that feeling, that natural feeling of drawing a pencil or pen gliding across paper, and uh, that's what I'm really looking for because I'm going to be drawing a lot, and uh, I just want the drawing experience to be smooth, and uh, so that's why I'm really testing out these devices and giving these reviews because I know a lot of us out there are one trying to find. Um, stuff on a budget but then also just find stuff that's comfortable and it is so hard for us artists out there to get really good reviews on the stuff um, half the time when I search for reviews it's usually um, like I said before they will just give you the specs and they won't give you um, how it actually is to use and what it really feels like so I really wanted to just create this uh, not only for myself so that I can go back and see if I wanna you know like in the future if I decide to get rid of this one maybe get another one you know I can always use this as a reference to go back through and just see all the tests that I did and um, see my thoughts on it when I first got it so um, with that being said I'm gonna be wrapping this up here shortly um, I'm just gonna go ahead and show one more thing that I can um, do with these uh, hotkeys and we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up um, now if you guys have any questions or, or wondering anything about anything in this video whether it's software or brushes or how to do this or that please just leave it in the comment below um, the reason I create these videos is honestly just to um, you know give you guys some feedback on what's out there um, what you guys can use um, and then to get feedback from you guys as well like what are your guys' thoughts on a lot of this stuff um, so I'm very curious to see um, if anyone else out there has been using the Wicom uh, Mobile Studio Pro and um, what your thoughts are on it and um, to leave all, the, all that kind of stuff in the comments below and um, I'll definitely be responding to all that kind of stuff. Okay, so here's the last little trick that I like to do within Photoshop. Now, this is what's called, um, I guess, clipping or like masking, but there's a little shortcut for it. If you click Alt and Control, you can just go ahead and clip a layer to the one below it. 
Now, whatever you draw on this, this layer is going to be clipped to what was drawn in the layer below. So, say you draw the blob, pretty much, that kind of represents the body. You can go in and you can color it different things without having to worry about coloring it within the lines because you've already done that. So, we're just going to just take a, a darker gray, per se, and then go in and kind of color this right here. So as you can see, you don't have to worry about staying within the lines. It already knows to stay within the lines. And, you know, you just come in and you, you do your color and all that kind of stuff. So like I said before, any kind of hotkey that you can think of that you'll need, you got. Um, you can go ahead and just program it directly in. And, you know, say if that's too light, you can come down and make it darker. Again, just using your shortcuts and all that kind of fun stuff. And um, you can change it to whatever lightness or darkness that you need it to be, you know. So, um, all in all, it seems to be a great drawing tool. Uh, uh, the only drawbacks is that the fan, I've heard some people complain about the fan. And um, it is true, it is loud. Um, another complaint that I've seen and that I've actually experienced myself is that the screen gets pretty hot. And I don't know if it's just this model um, or maybe it's just the specific one I got since I bought it refurbished um, but I have seen complaints from other people as well that runs a little hot now I haven't been absolutely burned by it but this one day the fan was running pretty high and it was really hot and I was just running Photoshop so um, that was kind of like a, a red flag kind of time but other than that I think the drawing experience is great and I think it is great for um, a, mo a mobile a mobile studio which you know that's what it's named for and what it's called for and I think it gives you a lot of flexibility um, and even right now it's like I'm recording um, both my audio and my video screencasting and doing the drawing um, at 12 or 1920 wait, 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 um, let me go ahead and get this the things for it. 1920 by 1080 um, so HD, which is nice, and uh, didn't really seem to notice any slowdown. So I would give it a, a thumbs up for performance uh, for the lower class. Just the only thing is that heat, um, that little heat problem, honestly. And um, yeah, that's about it. Now, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Again, um, honestly, I think it's pretty great for creating some stuff, and you only need the tablet, you don't need any external devices. And honestly, you can kind of get rid of just having a uh, having to buy like Cintiqs or anything like that. It's like you just have one device. It's your computer. You can write. You can type. You can draw. You can record videos. You can edit videos. It's kind of like an all-in-one type of deal, and that's really what I've been looking for. And I think this is um, pretty close to perfection. As close that I've seen it. Um, so yeah, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, I'll be back with more drawing tutorials and art vlogs. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the review. Hope you got something from it. Um, and if you did, uh, give it a like. If you didn't, um, you know, write it down in the comments what you would have liked to see. Or you know, you can just go find another review for this. Um, there's a few others out there. So, well, anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. Um, uh, if you guys do have this product or you do get this product let me know and we'll definitely have a, a chat and a conversation about it so all right guys you have a great day and i'll uh, be back with another video all right peace